why is it relevant to study tourism? Well, probably you all know uh, tourism has grown tremendously in the last couple of decades. Um, and uh, this has a huge socioeconomic impact. Uh, one in 10 people in the world have a job in tourism, in some countries more than others. In the Netherlands, it's a bit less. In, in countries like Greece, it's more. And um, well, about 10% of the world GDP is constituted by tourism. So it's, it's pretty big. Uh, but something has changed now after 70 years of continuous growth. Uh, for the first time in history since the Second World War, um, tourism has come to an almost complete still stand, standstill. So that's a big thing. <laughs> and uh, um, a lot of borders are closed or almost closed. Less planes are flying. A lot of people's jobs are at risk or they already lost their jobs. Um, that tourism is more than um, a socio-economic phenomenon. It also has uh, a lot of impact on the environment, on nature, on local cultures. Um, think, for instance, about the, the cheap flights that led to a huge increase of people flying to their tourist destinations, which led to an increase in carbon dioxide emissions, uh, which has contributed greatly to global warming and rising sea levels. Some tourism destinations are already disappearing because of that. Um, or the impact on natural resources, um, the waste left by uh, cruise ships. But tourism can also has, uh, have a, a positive impact on natural resources. For instance, um, it can stimulate conservation practices and the creation of nature. The same for local culture. Some local traditions and lifestyles uh, are preserved because they are interesting for tourists, but others uh, disappear because of tourist and tourist, tourists entering the region. Um, so it's quite clear that tourism brings a lot of challenges. Um, the public protests against, against over tourism, or um, geopolitical crisis influencing. Um, tourist situations. For instance, uh, the refugee crisis uh, clashes with tourists visiting uh, the beaches and so on. Um, well, this calls for alternatives. We need to think about, will tourism return to how it originally was after the COVID-19 crisis? Or um, do we need to think of alternatives? Will we travel in different ways? Um, Will we travel less frequently or less far or maybe more virtual? Will more people um, travel uh, in a slow tourism way where they have less impact on local um, water and energy supplies and uh, usually behave more responsibly uh, towards local communities and, um, and the environment? So we need people who are able to think, uh, to study the impacts and challenges and to help uh, rebuild tourism in a more sustainable way. So in this program, we intend to create uh, or to educate um, critical thinkers, strategic thinkers or agents of change who are able to help public and private organizations uh, to deal with these challenges and also um, to uh, make tourism a more sustainable practice. Hello, my name is Tasha Koot and I'm one of the teachers in the Master of Tourism at Wageningen University. Um, in brief, I will explain to you what this master exactly entails and uh, the four trajectories that are included in the master. But before I go to the four trajectories, a little bit of background. Um, it's important for you to be aware that tourism was the biggest economic industry in the world until COVID-19 hit in and it hit in very hard. So um, this has had an enormous effect on the tourism industry, um, but it also shows how big and, and, and important this industry is and has become in the last few decades. Um, you should look at it the way we do it in Wageningen as an understanding of tourism, meaning that we do not teach you how to run a tourism business, but we ask ourselves academic questions based on theory. 
what is tourism? What does it come about? What motivates tourists? And we do this from a multidisciplinary perspective, meaning we use various disciplines, including geography, sociology, political science, um, economics, anthropology, psychology, you name it. And we use all of these disciplines together to answer these questions. Um, an important um, and a unique point in Wageningen, I think, is that we really look at the sustainability, socially and environmentally, of tourism. As said, um, we have uh, four trajectories that you can choose from, meaning that you will follow this, these courses within this trajectory. Some are obligatory, some are free choice. And then you can actually start creating your own tourism program. And the first trajectory that I briefly want to explain is called tourism and development. And it's asking uh, questions such as what is the role of development in relation to tourism? What does development entail in the first place? And how does that relate to power structures? For example, racial inequalities or um, um, socioeconomic injustices uh, through tourism. This, this is being done at an urban context, at the at a, at a rural context. And, and we also look at how it relates, for example, to agriculture. We look at tourism phenomena that are addressing these points. Think about community-based tourism or volunteer tourism, uh, very popular at the moment. So you see all these kinds of tourism uh, coming up. And I myself, I worked in community-based tourism in Southern Africa with indigenous people. And how do indigenous groups relate to tourism? How do they perceive it? The second trajectory is predominantly focused on uh, natural resources and how tourism relates to national parks, nature conservation and wildlife. Um, think of topics such as the loss of biodiversity, which is a big problem at the moment, human wildlife conflicts and how tourism relates to this. And on the one hand, tourism is protecting nature in many cases. You can find various examples on, uh, of that. On the other hand, what you can also see is that tourism often is, is part of the problem. And it really depends on, 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 on exactly which case study you look at and which place and at which phenomenon where tourism stands. But these are important things to find out. Um, other more broader issues that need to be addressed within this trajectory are, for example, the issue of water shortage, energy transition, uh, the, the waste issue, uh, the, the waste that tourists create, and, and other issues such as, for example, um, um, biodiversity loss. I already mentioned that. And I myself, I currently work next to the Kruger National Park, where there's an enormous tourism industry, high-end luxurious lodges where people go on safaris. At the same time, there's a rhino poaching crisis inside and outside of the Kruger National Park. And I look at the relation between the two, just to give you an example of what this can entail. The third trajectory is called tourism and experiences and looks at the social and psychological um, experiences that tourists have, not only tourists, but for example, it could also be people working in the tourism industry. Um, and, but this is predominantly focused on the tourists and how they experience new types of tourism. Think about slow tourism. It used to be seeing as much as possible within a month, but now you have different types of tourism coming up. Um, yoga tourism or other spiritual types of tourism. Food tourism is very important at the moment. Surf tourism, sports tourism, adventure tourism, you name it. Important Important here is also the digitalization and what you saw, for example, when COVID-19 hit in was that I, I received many newsletters from lodges in South Africa and many of them now started to offer online safaris. So tourism, even safari experiences went online, meaning the whole experience must have changed uh, tremendously for tourists. And the fourth and last trajectory that I want to briefly explain to you is called tourism and global change. And this is about the financialization of the world and financial flows. Think about also migration, mobilities, and of course, climate change, um, terrorism and authoritarianism, the rise of authoritarianism at the moment. These are all the types of issues that are being addressed within this trajectory. When you, when you think about, for example, the Mediterranean, this is a very interesting area you see it on the slide here also highlighted. It's, it's the biggest, the busiest tourist destination in the whole world. At the same time, it has lots of issues with migration. And within this trajectory, you could dig deeper into questions such as how these two relate. How does migration in the Mediterranean affect tourism and the other way around? And um, that's the type of questions that you can ask yourself in tourism and global change and that we will um, um, conduct in the courses.
Okay. Thank you very much. This is just a brief introduction and we hope to see you one day in Wageningen for the Master of Tourism. Thanks.